but I want to welcome you to Saturation Ministries Global this morning. We have an exciting service this morning, a powerful praise and worship, a word that's very impactful to our lives today. First of all, I would like to say we just we know that you could have been anywhere today, but you consider joining us, and we're so grateful for it. We want to just say thank you so much. What I'll do is I'll pray, and then we'll go into our praise and worship at this time. Father God, we just honor you. We glorify you. We went to your gates with thanksgiving. We went to your courts with praise, Father. We say that you're God from everlasting to everlasting. There is none like you, Lord. Neither is there any besides you, Father God. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, Lord. We just want to thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you're worthy to be praised, Father God. We just want to thank you right now for the praise and worship that will go forth, Father. You said that you inhabit the praises of your people, Father. And Father, we thank you, Father, for the powerful word that we're going to hear today, Father. We love your word today, Father. That word, we will... We, it will be hidden in our hearts that we might not sin against you, Father God. We thank you today, Father God, that your word is forever settled in heaven. We just want to bless your holy name. We just want to praise you. We want to worship you, Lord God, just for even just waking us up this morning. We just want to praise you. We want to give you all of the glory and all of the honor in Jesus' name. At this time, we'll go with our praise team. Amen. Grandmother used to sing, Praise Him, Praise Him, Jesus, Blessed Savior, you're worthy to be praised. Praise Him. Praise Him. 
Lord, our tithe and offering time is so good to be able to give unto the Lord. Amen. Um, we have several ways to give at this time. You'll see them on your screen at this time. Let's just thank God. We just get to give our gifts before the Lord. Amen. And at this time, we'll also read our uh, declaration of faith. If you would like to, it's on the screen. You can read it along with me. Father, you said in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 7 and 8, that you love a cheerful giver and that you're able to bless me abundantly so that in all things, at all times, I will have all that I need and abound in every good work. Therefore, I give my tithes and offerings cheerfully and in faith because of my obedience. I decree that I will experience no lack in any area of my life. I decree that I will have creative power to gain wealth and will exercise wisdom <clears throat> and discipline as a wise steward. I decree that I am blessed, I am prosperous, I am in good health as I move toward and maintain financial freedom. I declare it is so in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen, saints. At this time, we're going to go back and have some more praise with our ministry leader, Karen Scott. And then the next person you'll see will be our pastor, Pastor Carla Randall. And she's going to bring that awesome word to us this morning. God bless you. Enjoy the service. Amen.
I love you more than anything. Come on, can you continue in that worship? Come on, come on, continue in that worship. Tell the Lord, I love you. I love you more. I love you more than anything. How many of you can testify that you love God more than anything? When you when you think of his goodness and all that he has done for you, you can testify that you love him more, more than anything. He's just that good of a God. And we worship him this morning. We bless him. We lift up his name. His name is above every name. Come on, put your hands together right in your living room and give God the greatest praise. Give God the greatest thank you. <laughs> Come on, tell God I love you. I love you, Lord. I appreciate you. Everything that you've done, everything that you are doing, everything that you've promised to do, I bless your name this morning, God, and I give you the glory and the honor. I appreciate you, Father. There is nobody like you. Come on, give him praise. Just love on him just a little bit this morning. He is worth Worthy, he is worthy. He is worthy. It is of the Lord's mercies that we were not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning and great and great and great is his faithfulness unto us. I am so glad to see you this morning. Thank you so much for tuning in. So excited about what the Lord has done. I don't know about you, but God has been good to me. Hallelujah. And I'm excited. I'm excited to, this morning to be in the presence of the Lord. And I'm excited to be able to stand before you this morning and share with you what the Lord has put into my spirit for our message today. I trust that you all have had a wonderful week and that you are anticipating a word from the Lord, a word from the Lord. Greetings to my Saturation Ministries family. So grateful for all of you. Love you very much. Miss you. Miss you. Can't wait till we can all get together real soon. But until that time, we're going to still keep proceeding in what the Lord has called us to do. So, so get your Bibles. I hope that you have your Bibles. Um, blessings to our kids that um, had their, their uh, children's church, their Sunday school class this morning. So grateful for our kids that are involved in ministry and for our leaders that are sacrificing uh, and moving us forward in ministry. Get your Bibles, get your Bibles. I need you to turn with me this morning to uh, the book of Psalm, the book of Psalm. And of course, you know, I always love to read old and new. So we're also going to turn to the book of Matthew chapter four. So Psalm, the 46th division, and then also Matthew chapter 4. Chapter 4, God is giving us a word this morning. I need you to pay particular attention and to open up your spirit so that you can receive what the Lord is saying directly to you, directly to you. So please, Psalm 46, we're going to read verses 10 and 11. And I encourage you this morning that as you're reading the scripture to read it out loud so that it is in your atmosphere. Okay? So as we read the scripture this morning, read it out loud with me. So Psalm 46, 10 and 11. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. We, we will read that part one more time. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Let's turn over now to Matthew chapter 4. We're going to read verses 1 through 4. Remember, please read aloud with me. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So this morning, my assignment is to just share with you the message entitled, Be Still 
and proceed. Be still and proceed. Now, Father, it's in the name of Jesus that we are so grateful that we have access into your divine presence. We don't take that for granted, God. We thank you that you have chosen us even before the foundation of the world. We thank you, Lord God, that you're God, that you're sovereign, that you reign. You're not surprised by anything. Hey, we thank you this morning, God, that you already knew where we would be right now. And so we give you praise this morning because you are our refuge. You are our very present help. Uh, and we bless you, God, because we know that you are with us. You promise that you never leave nor forsake us. So as we enter into the word this morning, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would breathe upon it and breathe upon us. That, Father, as this word goes out, that in the name of Jesus, Father, it will fall in good ground. Hearts that are prepared to hear hearts that are prepared to receive, hearts that are prepared to obey. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, speak now, Father. We await to hear what the Spirit is saying to us, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Be still and proceed. Uh, be still and proceed is seemingly an oxymoron. And an oxymoron is simply a phrase that has contradictory or contrasting words. So how is it possible to be still and still proceed? Uh, the simplicity of what may sound like a complexity is centered upon one word. That word is trust. We are admonished in Proverbs 3, 5, to trust in the Lord with all our heart and to lean not unto our own understanding. Psalm 62, 8 says, trust in him at all times, all times. Ye people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Mm. Uh, Psalm 37, 5 says, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. He shall bring it to pass. So the command to be still is not given as a restriction of mobility and progressive movement. No, to the contrary, the command to be still is given to posture you for mobility and movement toward the promises and destiny of God because you trust him. Uh, to be still then is a spiritual disposition or posture rather than a physical position or posture. Well, what is a disposition? A disposition is a predominant or prevailing tendency or inclination, the way that you respond. It's your makeup or character or what you lean toward doing in most cases. So then a spiritual disposition is the predominant or prevailing tendency of a believer. The qualities or tendencies that identify you and how you lean toward God. It's, it's your trust factor. The spiritual disposition is how much you trust God. I am therefore suggesting that there is a predominant tendency or inclination or state of mind and spirit that identifies us as believers no matter what we're going through. Let me say that again. I am suggesting that there is a predominant tendency or inclination or state of mind and spirit that identifies us as believers no matter what we're going through. There is a spiritual disposition or leaning that we should display regardless of our circumstance, whether on the mountaintop or in the valley or even in a pandemic. This spiritual disposition, this posture, is easy to sustain when things are going well, when things are going right, when things are lining up, when things are going the way I want them to, However, this same disposition should still identify our degree of trust in God, even in the midst of our conflict, 
our adverse circumstances, when things don't go right, even in crisis. Again, our spiritual disposition is our trust. Come on, put that in there. My trust in God. Listen, there is a degree of stillness and certainty. Stillness and certainty that we must possess when uh, we are in crisis. Mm, that's why the Bible says, be still and know. There is a stillness and certainty that we must possess, which in turn causes a continuous movement toward our destiny. This, this, this stillness and certainty causes us to continue to move. This, this uh, stillness and certainty causes us to still believe in spite of what things may look like. Trust says that I may not understand what's going on, but I trust God enough to bring me through. <laughs> trust says that I may be down right now, but I'm not going to stay there. I am going to rise again. And trust says I believe God over everything, even when I can't trace him, when, 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 when I can't see where God is in my current situation, I have enough trust to believe that he's still with me. My spiritual disposition, my, my posture is I trust God. If you trust God, if you trust God, just put it in the atmosphere right where you are. Just say it out loud. I trust God. I, I trust God. Write it in the comments this morning. I trust God. I trust him. I trust him to do it. I trust him to deliver me. I trust him to provide for me. I trust God. I trust him. I trust him. Uh, so now that we've established that to be still is a spiritual disposition based upon trust and not a restriction of movement, what is God saying as it relates to be still and proceed? Well, Pastor K, what do you mean by proceed? Our scripture text in Matthew chapter 4 references a response that Jesus gives to the devil. Satan is mocking the who-ness and the power of Jesus in an attempt to get him to react rather than respond. See, I, I, I just need you to be careful in this season. I know that there are so many things that are being said uh, and, and some things really don't sound good and, and we're experiencing death all around us and we're in this pandemic. But, but can I caution you please in this season to not allow your emotions to cause you to react rather than respond. Please, God is not expecting an emotional reaction to your circumstances, but rather a response of absolute trust, the certainty in his authority, the certainty in his power, the certainty in his sovereignty. So, so then the scripture says that Jesus was led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Please don't be surprised. News alert, news alert, please do not be surprised when God chooses you to be led to be tempted by the devil. Uh, don't be surprised when God chooses you uh, to allow you to be tempted. He, he just wants to brag on your spiritual disposition. Uh, he says, has thou considered my servant Job? Uh, uh, put your name in there. Can God, can God depend on you to, to just stand in the midst of your testing by the enemy? Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. So, so, so Satan says, if thou be. Uh, the devil is always going to question your identity in God in order to make you question your identity in God. He's going to question your identity in God in order for you to question your identity in God. I, I encourage you to be still. Know. Know who you are. Know that God has chosen you. Know that you are more than a conqueror. Know that you can get through it. And not only can you get through it, but because of the God you serve, you will. You will get through it. So, so if thou be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. But Jesus answered and said, it 
is written. Uh, uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth, proceedeth out of the mouth of God. When Jesus gave this response, he was actually, actually quoting an Old Testament scripture in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3. Uh, the scripture says, and he humbled thee, speaking of God, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by the word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. So when Jesus made the, the scripture, when he gave his response, it was already written. Now remember, remember the new, the new reveals the old. So it was already written in the old. Moses is rehearsing what God told Israel when they were in their wilderness experience recorded in the book of Exodus. Listen, God gave Israel a new normal. It sounds familiar. God gave Israel a new normal. No longer were they going to eat the food that they had brought out of Egypt. But God said, I'm going to feed you myself every day. I'm going to feed you bread from heaven. Listen, and when the people saw what God had provided, they didn't know what it was. They, they, they Listen, they called it manna, which really means, what is it? What is it? They didn't know what it was because it was a new thing. Listen, listen to, the, what, to what the Lord is saying unto you. They didn't know what it was. It was a new thing. But they knew it came from God. It was new. It, it, it was not their food as usual. God did a new thing. Listen, initially, their dependence for sustenance was on themselves. Uh, uh, they had food, but their food had run out. Mm, what they brought from the past, listen, what they brought from the past had run out, had run out. Their means of provision had run out. Please, please understand that there are times when God will allow your resources to run out. Listen, so that you can be still and know that he is God. He is the true source of all your resources. He will let some things happen in your life so that you will know who he is. Listen, if I were you, if I were you, even with your education, even with your good job, uh, it will be in your best interest, please understand, to acknowledge that God is still your provider. It may not be you right now, uh, but there are some people who have run out of resources. Uh, but I got good news. God can and will be your source if you will be still and trust him. I know it's going to make you uncomfortable because we are so accustomed to figuring things out ourselves. But the Lord told me to tell you, be still. Be still. Have a spiritual disposition of, of trust that God is going to make everything all right. Eh, everything is already all right, but you've got to trust. You've got to trust. So, so then God gave them a new normal. Their dependency, listen, was now on God. Eh, this new normal was a test of their trust. Why? Well, well, well God gave instruction that the manna was to be gathered in the morning, but to only gather enough, listen, for the day. Uh, the only exception was that on the sixth day, gather enough for tomorrow, which was the Sabbath. So no one works on the Sabbath, but gather enough only for the day. This was a test of their spiritual disposition. Would they trust God enough to provide what they needed to survive every day? Please hear God. Please, please hear God. Do you trust him enough to provide your daily bread? Do you trust God enough to provide for you when you know you don't have for yourself? Your spiritual disposition, is it a posture of trust? Yeah. And, so, and so God was testing his people. It was also a test of their obedience to follow the word and the instructions of God. 
Tell yourself, God is speaking and giving instructions right now. God is speaking and giving instructions. This new normal placed them in a position of dependency because there was no other means of provision. But listen, their dependency was satisfied by God's sufficiency. I need you to write that. My dependency is satisfied by God's sufficiency. Uh, God says, I'm going to provide this manna for you. Sometimes it's going to be, listen, it's going to be something your eyes haven't seen. It's going to be something your ears haven't heard. Something that hasn't even uh, been considered in your heart. And I'm going to provide for you every day. Just trust me. Uh, I, 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 this is about Israel. This is about the manna. But I trust that you can hear God speaking to you this morning about your own situation. Uh, God told me to tell you, please don't get stuck in your last revelation of him. Uh, he is speaking now. He is doing a new thing. God said, don't limit me to my last experience. Will you trust me enough to proceed even in the midst of this pandemic? I know what you are accustomed to, uh, but because I'm doing a new thing, what is your spiritual disposition? Will you trust me enough to believe? That I'm going to get you through it. Mm. Will you trust me enough to believe that I'm going to provide for you? Will you trust me enough to believe that I have you covered? I have you I have you covered. Uh, uh, but God says, I need you to understand that man does not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded. Can you say proceeded? But by every word that proceeded, which means continuously proceeds, uh, it continuously goes forth uh, out of the mouth of God, continuously proceeds out of the mouth of God. Again, uh, we preached a message last week uh, and God is saying, may I have your attention, please, uh, because God is speaking directly to you. God says, listen, people of God. Believers and even those who don't believe. Yeah. You're going to need more than what you can provide for yourself. I hope that you understand, even in the midst of this pandemic, uh, that man does not live by bread alone. You're going to need something more. You're going to need something more than what you can provide for yourself. God says you're going to need a proceeding word. Mm. You're going to need a fresh word. You're going to need a now word. As, as a matter of fact, I am the word, so so you're going to need me. You're going to need God. To get through where you are, you're going to need God. You're going to need direction and you're going to need instruction so that you can proceed through the pandemic and yet possess the promises of God. Tell yourself, be still and proceed. God is giving you a proceeding word. Listen, there are two primary Greek words that describe scripture, uh, which are translated word in the New Testament. Uh, the first is logos, logos. Uh, the logos refers to the total word of God, the, the breathed out word of God that's written in scripture. Uh, when we read uh, Hebrews 4.12, uh, it says the word of God is quick and powerful. That word is logos. The logos of God is quick and powerful. Uh, the one that we're probably most familiar with is John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God's. We can read it as, in the beginning was the Logos, and the Logos was with God, and the Logos was God. So Logos, listen, in Greek means thought, idea, reason, concept. This suggests that the entire word of God deals with his creative and redemptive plan already accomplished and already achieved in the mind of God. So we could say that in the beginning was the thought of God and the thought was with God and the thought was God. Uh, this also suggests that if the Logos is thought, reason, idea, concept, and the Logos became flesh, then Jesus is the thought, the idea, the reason, the concept. Jesus is 
Logos. Listen, he's not, listen, listen. He's not only the thought, he's the thinker of the thought. <laughs> so then, so then Logos is the thought, idea, reason, and concept of God in written form. So we could read it and say, in the beginning was Jesus. <laughs> And Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. Huh? Can you see it? Huh? That's the Logos. That's the Logos. That is the entire Word of God written in Scripture. Uh, and so then, that, des that describes the thought, idea, reason, and concept that is in the mind of God. So, so the other word that is used uh, to, to describe a word is rhema. Rhema. A rhema word is the Holy Spirit illuminating a particular scripture for application. Listen, it's like when you're reading the Bible and those words jump up off the page and speak directly to you about your situation, about your personal circumstance. A rhema word is a specific word for a specific season, for a specific purpose, to a specific people. A rhema word, listen, can never contradict the Logos. Uh, God can never contradict himself. Remember, he is the Logos. So a rhema word, however, can be revelation of the Logos. A rhema can be God speaking directly to you specifically from the Logos. Listen, uh, God speaking to you specifically about what he has already written and declared. So then, when Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every rhema, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, there is a proceeding word in this season. There is a rhema word from God. The proceeding word is the word that God gives in order for us to move forward. This message is to help you understand, please understand, that even in this season, God is giving a proceeding word uh, of the purpose of his desire in the earth realm, uh, for the purpose of moving you into possession of his promise, even in a pandemic. God spoke to me in prayer and said the proceeding word for saturation ministries, the proceeding word for this season to the believers is proceed. The preceding word, the, the, the continuing word, the specific word for the season, your the, the specific word for your circumstance is proceed. Well, well what do you mean by proceed? Uh, uh, God is saying, be still and move. Be still and move forward with what I'm telling you. Listen, don't allow yourself to get stuck with everything that everybody is saying about this pandemic. I'm giving you a proceeding word to advance you into possessing the promises of God. But God says, be still and proceed with the plans I'm going to give you. Uh, be still and embrace your new normal and trust me to provide. The, the proceeding word is a fresh word. Listen, a fresh anointing, a fresh start. A new thing, a new way. God says, the more you trust me, the more I'll speak. Yeah. And the more I share, the more I'll provide. Yeah. You've got to get into a position and a posture with God that you hear what he's saying even now. The preceding word is proceed. That means move. That means advance. I, I, I know it might not seem popular because of everything that's going on in the world. But God, listen, God is not restricted by the pandemic. His promises are not restricted by the pandemic. Your destiny is not restricted by the pandemic. God said, be still and proceed. My word, my word, God says, is based upon my opinion of myself. And I am God. I am sovereign. I reign. I am able. So then God says, God says, be still 
and move. I know that the world is in a time of uncertainty, but I'm commanding you today to be still and proceed according to the word of God. God says, I have not changed my mind about my word unto you. Uh, the uncertainty of the current circumstances cannot negate, negate the certainty of my word. Let me say it again. The uncertainty of the current circumstances cannot negate the certainty of my word. What God has declared, it is so. And you got to speak that in your spirit. It is so. So, so then be still. Shift in your spiritual disposition. Trust God beyond what you see. Yeah. Trust, God says, trust me beyond what you have. Trust me beyond where you are right now. Trust me, trust me, just, just trust me. My preceding word, my rhema word is proceed. Take the risk of faith and do it. Take the risk of faith and proceed. Listen, I know this season is unusual yeah, and, and, and it's frightening and, and, and even depressing, uh, but be still. Uh, be certain in the ability of God to take care of you. What is your spiritual disposition? Can you testify that you believe God above your circumstance? Uh, uh, we had the saying God over everything. But, but it cannot be just words. It has to be your disposition. It has to be what you stand on. It has to be what causes you to move. Uh, it has to be what causes you uh, to proceed. So, so, so please, this is what the Lord is saying. Don't try to take things into your own hands. Uh, uh, man can't live by bread alone. Uh, man can't live by what you just can provide for yourself. There, there, there's something else you're going to need. Uh, be still and know that I am God. Be still and proceed. Be, be still and move. Can you, can you be still and just start it again? Mm. Be still and start over. <laughs> this is your season and your time. Listen, to keep pressing. This is your time to keep speaking it. This is your time to step out, to step over, to step through, to proceed. Can somebody say proceed? <laughs> proceed with the searching for the new house. Ah, I don't know who that word is for, but God said proceed. Uh, proceed with plans for the new building. Uh, I don't know who that word is for, but I'm claiming it for saturation ministries. Uh, proceed in looking. Proceed with the plans. Uh, Proceed with trusting me over everything. Listen, the promises of God are not based upon this natural economy. Yeah. The promises of God are based upon God's sufficiency. Uh, and I speak, I speak, I speak uh, an Isaac anointing upon you today. What, 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 what do you mean, Pastor? I speak an Isaac anointing upon you. Uh, the Bible says in Genesis 26, 12, that Isaac sold in a season of famine. <laughs> Hear me, church. Hear me. Uh, uh, at a season of famine similar to what we're going through today. Yeah? He proceeded in planting crops when it was unpopular. Uh, uh, when other people were saying, are you crazy, man? Don't you know that we are in a famine and you're going to still plant crops with the expectation that the crops are going to come up? Yes. I just say yes. Yes. I, I, I still believe because my spiritual disposition says I trust God. Uh, uh, don't you know we're in a famine, Isaac? Don't you know, church, that we're in a crisis and, and you're saying, Pastor K, that God is saying be still and proceed? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, don't you know? Uh, that you that I don't even have a job and you're trying to tell me to proceed and start a business y yes ma'am yes sir uh, but the Bible says that Isaac listen Isaac reaped in the same year 100 fold uh, the Bible says then Isaac sold in that land and received in the same year a hundred fold and the Lord blessed him and the man waxed great and went forward. He, he proceeded and grew until he became very great. How did that happen? Because God blessed him. Because his spiritual disposition said that even in the midst of famine, I'm still going to proceed with what God has told me to do. If, if you would just believe God. 
If you would just shift in your spiritual disposition, God is saying, be still, be certain, be sure, be confident that I am able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. That it doesn't matter about the famine. It doesn't matter about the crisis. It doesn't matter about the pandemic. What did I say? Yeah, uh, I'm the one that can keep my word. I'm sending you a proceeding where it's time for you to move. Yeah. He considered not the circumstance. He considered the certainty of his God. Yeah. Can you stop considering your circumstance and choose to trust the certainty of God in his power, in his ability, in his sovereignty. He is a way maker. He is a miracle worker. He is a promise keeper. He is light in the darkness. Do you trust him? Do you trust him? Can you, can you trust him beyond your own circumstance? So I speak that Isaac anointing upon you and anybody who wants to have that type of spirit, I want you to just reach up and grab it and claim it. That I have the Isaac anointing. That I am going to still plant. I'm still going to move. I'm still going to proceed. And I have the expectation that I'm going to reap in the same year. Uh, uh, we're in the month of April. Uh, we're in the month of April now. So I'm just believing God. I'm going to plant my seed. I'm going to plant faith. I'm going to plant trust. And I'm waiting to see what God's going to do in this year, 2020. Uh, I just believe that if you will trust God, I, I, I just believe that if you would still proceed and do what God has told you to do, that you're going to see manifestation in the same year. He said he received 100 fold in the same year. I need you to be still and still move. I need you to be still and proceed. That is, that is the preceding word that God has given, that God has given. God's going to cause you to reap. Uh, what has he told you to do? Proceed. What has God revealed to you? Proceed. What has God deposited in your spirit? Proceed. What is God nudging you to do? Proceed. Stand still. Trust him with all your heart. Trust him to provide. Trust him to make a way. Listen, because he is. He is the way. Trust him to bring it to pass. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him to sustain you. Yeah, uh, listen, Israel could only gather for the day. Take no thought for tomorrow, God says. I got you covered. If you can trust and believe, if you if you would just be still, if you won't let the circumstances move you from your posture and position of trust. Listen, I want you to be still and proceed. Uh, the whole world, do you see the condition of the world? We are in a global pandemic. Uh, but the world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Why? Because we testify of God. The world now needs a savior. Will you open up your mouth and proceed in doing what God has called you to do so that people can hear about this great God? Uh, they need a savior. But well, well, we are the ones who are saved and God has given us the assignment to go. Hey, to go, to go, to move. God has given us the assignment to proceed. Proceed. Proceed with his plan. Proceed with his purpose. Proceed in purpose. Proceed in confidence. Take the risk of faith and proceed. Listen, you can't live on what was. Eh, you have to proceed with God's proceeding word. And his right now word. His fresh word. The word for this season shall proceed. Proceed. Shall I will. I will. I will proceed. Uh, uh, I will proceed. I will trust God. Uh, can you believe with me? Uh, just put in there. I, I, I believe with you, Pastor K. Yeah. I trust God. I trust God. And I will proceed. I, I will not stop because of the circumstance. I, I will not give up because of the pandemic. I, I will not surrender because of the crisis. But I will be still and proceed. Yeah. It's an attitude you have to have. Listen, it's a spiritual posture you have to take and that you will not be intimidated by the enemy. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. So I therefore speak the word of God. 
I speak the word. I speak the word that I am more than a conqueror. I speak the word that all power. I have all power over the enemy. I speak the word that I am the head and not the tail. I speak the word that I am blessed and cannot because I speak the word, the word. I speak the word of God. And so, and so God has given us a proceeding word. Listen, listen. I remember, I remember when my mom passed away. Uh, and, and so, of course, I was grieving. And I, and I read the Bible all the time. And I, and, and I trust the scripture. And so one day I was reading and I came across a verse that I had, I sh I'm sure I've read it before. But this verse, it leaped up off the page and it captured me. And all the verse said was, was uh, having therefore obtained help of God, I continue. <laughs> that thing hit my spirit so uh, because I was down and discouraged. Uh, I, my mom had just passed. But that word says, listen, having therefore obtained help of God, I continue. And I speak that word over you today. Having therefore obtained help of God, continue. Having therefore obtained help of, help of God, proceed. Having therefore obtained help of God, move, move, move. Uh, trust him and believe. Having therefore obtained help. He's here to help us. He's here to help us. God promised he won't leave us. And I want to encourage you today to be still and proceed. God has not changed his mind. What he spoke to you and what he's speaking to you. Ah, please, 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 uh, don't be intimidated. Don't be intimidated by what you hear from God and then you juxtapose that against uh, what you hear from uh, CNN about this pandemic. Listen, Mm -mm, no, no, no. God's word is greater. Yeah. God's word is greater. God is greater than this pandemic. Can you hear me? God is greater than this crisis. He will not allow the situation to be greater than his own word. No, sir. Mm -mm. Be still, be still and proceed. Be still and proceed. So, so then how do you receive this proceeding word? Uh, because, because God is conversational, people of God. God is conversational. He is yet speaking. So, so, so then, so then how do you get this proceeding word the same way I did? In prayer and in reading the word. Yeah. Having my heart prepared to receive and to hear from him. So God told me to challenge you. So I want you to do these things this week. He said, number one, sit at my feet this week with no distractions. You got to be like Mary, not like Martha. Martha was busy in the kitchen, uh, but Mary desired the good thing. She sat at the feet of Jesus. What do I mean? Uh, uh, just sit in some meditational time before God. Mm -hmm. Number one. Number two, uh, God said, start your day with prayer. Remember, they gathered manna in the morning. In the morning, start your day off with prayer, not Facebook, not the news, not CNN, not, not the, the report from the president. No, start your day with prayer. Start your day with prayer. Number three, listen. Uh, that's the key. Listen for a proceeding word. Whatever time you spend in prayer, make sure you take the same amount of time to listen. Now, that's key because, because many of us pray, but we don't have the habit of listening. We pray and we get up. No, no. Whatever amount of time that you spend in prayer in the morning, take that same amount of time to just listen to God. And he's conversational. Stop wanting to, to, to run the whole conversation. God wants to speak to you as well as he wants you to speak to him. So, so listen for a preceding word. And then, number four, read the word. But when you read it, read it with the expectation that God is going to lift the words off that page and speak directly to you. Woo! God will, remember, remember God's word is spirit and life. Uh, 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 so his word is alive. His word is active. Uh, these aren't just dead words written in a Bible. This is God. This is God. So when you read the word, read the word with the expectation that God's going to lift those words up off that page and speak directly to you. Mm. Number five, be still. Mm. Trust God with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Maintain your spiritual disposition, your absolute trust, so that God can speak to you 
at any time. You could be riding down the street. Uh, my bishop, Bishop Norman L. Wagner, we would tease him and say this man could get a word from anything, from a billboard, from something written on a piece of paper. Listen, God is speaking all the time. And his spirit will give you a nudge in your spirit about a particular word he is speaking to you. A proceeding word. A proceeding word. Uh, so be still. Trust God so that he can speak to you at any time. If you feel yourself uh, drifting to a place of doubt uh, or a place of fear, shift your lean. Hey, come on, come on, write that, write that in the comments. Shift your lean. What do you say? Shift your lean from your own understanding. Yeah, shift your lean on what God has said. Two. Shift your lean from what you understand, shift it to what God has said. Ah, you got to shift your lean. Lean not to your own understanding. And mm. all your ways acknowledge him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Ah, so I need, you to do, I need you to do those five things. Sit at his feet. Start your day with prayer. Yeah. Listen for the preceding word. Listen. So, so the time you spend in prayer. Spend that same amount of time in just listening to God. Read your word. That's number four with the expectation that God's going to speak to you directly. Listen, if it doesn't happen on the first day, don't be discouraged. Don't let the, it, listen, don't let the enemy intimidate you and say, God ain't speaking to you. Will you rebuke the devil? You have power to do that too. Rebuke the enemy and you stay seated. Stay seated. And then number five, be still. Trust God with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. Lean not into your own understanding. Shift your lean and trust and trust God. There is a preceding word. God put it in my spirit. The rhema word is proceed. Be still and proceed. I know that the season doesn't seem like it's the time to move. Ah, but isn't it just like God ah, to supersede everything else that's going on around you and promote you? Ah, isn't it just like God to silence the noise and speak and tell you to move into that into that house? Ah, uh, uh, to move. Go over here. Go over on this side of town and have a house prepared for you. Isn't it just like God? Isn't it just like God to give you a command to move when everything else is standing still? Woo! He's just that kind of God. Be still. Be still. Be still, saints. Be still. Know for sure. Be certain. Be confident. Have an attitude about it. Come on. Sometimes, sometimes uh, you have to have an attitude about it because the enemy comes in like a flood. But listen. I declare and decree yeah, that I am who God says I am. I declare and decree that I'm going to trust him over everything. I declare and decree that even if I don't have it right now, that either God's going to send it himself or he's going to send somebody with what I need. He's just that kind of God. Be still. Saints, be still. Be still and proceed. Don't you dare back up from what God told you to do. You might have to go another way. Yeah. Uh, Bishop Wagner would say, no doesn't always mean no. No just means go another way. Yeah. Go another way. You might have to embrace a new normal, but embrace the new normal and proceed. Proceed. Don't you dare give up on God. He's anticipating and expecting uh, uh, his word to come forth out of your mouth. He's anticipating and expecting there to be movement in your life. He says, have you considered my servant, Carla? Have you considered my servant, Kia? Have you considered my servant, Daphne? Have you considered my servant, Krista? Have you considered them? Because I believe that their spiritual disposition is going to cause them to proceed. <laughs> Woo! I'm excited today because of this proceeding word. Get up from where you are and proceed. 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 Hallelujah. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus... Ooh, we thank you for your word, God. We thank you for your word to proceed. Uh, uh, because you've given us that word, that means that you have already opened up the way. Yeah. 
thank you, Lord God, that you are the God uh, that lifts up valleys and, and you are the God that pulls down mountains so that we can have progressive movement. And, and so, Father, everyone that's listening today, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would give them the courage, give them the spiritual disposition to trust you in spite of what they see, in spite of what they hear, in spite of what they're experiencing right now, that you have given a word to proceed. I speak in the name of Jesus, that Isaac anointing, that God, we will dare to sow even in famine with the expectation that we will reap in the same year. Thank you, God, because your word is true. It, it, it cannot fail. It cannot lie. It cannot return to you void. So we stand. We, we have a posture of trust, God. We have a posture of confidence, and we will, and we will proceed in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to write, I will proceed. Yeah. I will proceed. I will proceed. And then and then I want you all to, to, to go on our webpage uh, when it happens for you and share your testimony about how God has blessed you to reap in the same year. I trust this thing with everything in me that, that I know this is a season of famine right now, but we're going to believe God. Yeah. And God, not us, God is going to bless us. And bless us 100 fold. That's what the Bible says. I'm speaking the word. I'm speaking the word. Be still. Be still, saints, and, and proceed. Be still and proceed. I trust that the word has blessed you. Uh, and not only blessed you, but I trust that you'll take this word and hide it in your heart. That you would meditate on it this week. And you will do those five things that I've challenged you to do. God is speaking. God has a word specifically for you. Today he said proceed. Tomorrow he may say something else. Uh, because the, it is a proceeding word. A continuing word. A continuous word. Huh? So trust in the Lord. Be still and proceed. Uh, God said that, that there are some of you that are watching today that have been wrestling with surrendering your life to him. Uh, there are some of you uh, who are debating, who 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 who's struggling with, uh, should I do it now? Uh, or should I wait until we, we get back to a church building? But mm, God said, be still and proceed. Right now, you can lift up your hands. The Bible says, uh, what must I do to be saved? Uh, uh, repent and be baptized. Uh, the Bible says we have to be born again of water and spirit. That can happen for you right now. You don't have to wait until we get back into a church building. The Spirit of the Lord can come into your heart, can come into your home right now. So I speak in the name of Jesus that you will not wrestle another day. Yeah. But that you will open up your mouth, lift up your hands and say, Father, I repent. I repent right now. And not only do I, do I need you as my Savior, but I accept you as my Lord. That I will surrender my all. That I will turn from my way and I will turn to the way of the Lord. Just release that up unto him. Uh, and let God fill you with his spirit. <laughs> God wants you saved because he wants you to possess what he's promised before. Listen, before the world began, he already had you in mind. His thoughts about you haven't changed. Just be still and proceed. Repent and believe. That's the word of the Lord. So I trust you. And if you need assistance, write it in the comments. We can talk you through it, walk you through it. Because we believe that God is the answer. We believe that God is the one that will provide daily bread. <laughs> Why? Because he is. <laughs> he is the bread. Yeah, and so and so I trust that you will surrender today. Today is your day. Be still and proceed. Thank you so much for tuning in to Saturation Ministries Global. So grateful that God is speaking this word to us. I'm excited. I'm excited because I know he's speaking that word to me. Be still and proceed. Great things await you. Woo! Great things. Just, just proceed. Take the step. 
make the move, shift your lean, and believe God. I'm looking forward to seeing you on Wednesday for our Equip Bible class, 7 o'clock p.m. Um, and I'm excited to share that one of our ministers will be preaching on this coming Wednesday. Um, I, I'm the pastor, but I want to make sure that my ministerial staff has opportunity to grow and to preach the Word of God. I'm trusting that God has given her, Minister Cinchella Johnson, a preceding word. So when you tune in on this coming Wednesday at 7 p.m., expect to hear God. <laughs> I'm excited about that. And we're going to have our ministers ministering uh, because God has called them and put a word in them. So please join us on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Also on Thursday, we have a powerful anointed minister of prayer. And at uh, 6 o'clock every Thursday morning, remember, the, first, the, 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 the second challenge was start your day with prayer. Meet us at 6 o'clock Thursday morning, 6 a.m. Central Standard Time. Um, they will show the number. It's on our webpage so that you can join into that call and start your day. Amen. And then I'm looking forward to seeing you next Sunday. Thank you so much for tuning in. May the blessings of the Lord be upon you. I speak that Isaac anointing. Be still and proceed. And watch God bless you to reap in the same year. 100 fold. I declare it is so. Love and blessings, everybody. This is Pastor Kay. For your glory, I will do anything. Lord, if I find favor in your sight, Lord, Yes.